today I'm going to be sharing a study in regards to Bible sanctification. And Bible sanctification when it comes to living um, in holiness, living a holy life in all manner. And we're going to look at some scriptures and some statements from one of the pioneers to see how the Bible tells us that sanctification is part of the plan that God has for us while we, while we are in this life. So before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for just once again granting us life and your mercy to us. Father, we just want to ask for the illumination of your spirit as we read through the scriptures and through the writings of the pioneers. We ask that you will bless our study. We thank you, Father, for your loving kindness to us. And we thank you for, for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So our study today, Bible sanctification, living holiness. And I want to begin by defining what is sanctification. Sanctification it consists of setting apart or consecrated to a sacred or religious use. It means to be set apart for a purpose, for a definite, definite goal. And I want to just to look at the pattern in the example of Jesus, in the example of Christ. That in John 10, 36, it says that, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and set into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. So here in, this, in the words of Jesus here, it says that the Father was the one that sanctified him or set him apart and he sent him to the world. And in the work of redemption, he was set apart for that purpose that God had in store for the salvation of man, for the reconciliation of the whole world. And also in John 17, 19, it says, and for their sakes, speaking of the disciples, for the sakes of the disciples and even us, I sanctify myself, says Christ. And for the reason is that, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So even Christ, as he was in his humanity here on earth, in, the, in working out the plan of redemption for our behalf, he says, I sanctify myself that he was consecrating himself even more for the purpose that others, the Christians, his followers, will be sanctified through the word of truth. So sanctification is a part of God's will. It is very clear from Scripture, as we're going to see, that sanctification is part of God's plan, his will for our lives. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Three, it says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. And in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16 says, But as he that called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. So how is sanctification Affected. How does that work? By what means? We, the word of God says, the words of Jesus says in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And in Ephesians 5, 20, uh, 5, 26 and 27, speaking of Christ, that he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of the word by the, by the word. The washing of water by the word, that Christ might present itself to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. In these two scriptures, it plainly tells us that it is through the truth, it is through the word of God that we are sanctified and cleansed, that, we, that Christ will have a church that will be glorious, that will be without having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing. And I want to read something in regards to uh, that the Spirit and the Word of God has to go together, and they both agreed. In this book called Sanctification by D.T. Bordeaux, he says this, 
Some will try to evade the truth with the idea that they have the Spirit, and consequently, the sanctification of the Spirit. But what is the leading office of the Spirit that sanctifies? It is to God into truth, said Christ, When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 13. The spirit and the truth agreed. The spirit is the great agent that God employs in sanctifying men. Hence, Bible sanctification is called the sanctification of the spirit. 1 Peter 1 and 2. So the spirit helps our infirmity. It helps us to understand and receive and practice the truth. Therefore, the spirit, which is not in harmony with the truth of God's word, is not the sanctifying spirit of truth. And the sanctification, which is based on the leadings and teaching of such such a spirit, it is a false one. So with these quotations, it's very plain that we cannot separate the, the, the spirit and the word of God. They're, they're one and the same when it comes to the work of of sanctification that God wants to do through us, through his word, through his, through the spirit, and his, through the word. And sanctification, according to what we're going to read here, is sanctification is a work of a lifetime, and it involves cooperating with God. In this scripture, Paul is addressing Christians in the, in the Corinthians church, where he says, Wherefore, come out among, from among them, be ye separate, save the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, save the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So here, having the promises as Christians, he's telling He's telling them that we must cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of our flesh and spirit and we're to perfect holiness in the fear of God. And even Paul, he speaks about forgetting those things that are behind and to present towards that mark the high calling of God. So the work of sanctification is a cooperation and is a work of a lifetime. In Philippians 2 12 and 13 it says that there's two works there's the work of we have to work to have to work our own salvation with fear and trembling and then there is a work that god does for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure and then there as god works according to first thessalonians 5 23 and then the very god of peace god of peace who will sanctify you wholly and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as we cooperate with the spirit, as we cooperate with God, God says that he will sanctify us, that he will sanctify us, our whole spirit, our whole soul, and our whole body will be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to close with these quotations in regards to the understanding that we must have in the context of the prophetic record that is found in God's Word. It's from the same book, Sanctification by D.T. Bordeaux, in pages 13 to 15. It is clear, it is clear that we have reached a time when a flood of light is shining from God's Word on the path of the just, and that this light relates to the great event which is immediately impending. And what is that event? It's the coming of the Lord and to a preparation to meet it. This we denominate present truth because it applies to the present time and it is adopted to the wants of that present generation. It is through this truth that the church will be sanctified. Continuing, But some do not see the necessity of receiving the truths applicable to the time in order to be sanctified. They think that they can be sanctified by living as other good Christians have lived. But how have good Christians in the past been sanctified? Have they not been sanctified by the living up to the light 
that they had in their day? And if we are favored with more light than they were, if God has all the duties for us to perform, can we be sanctified by merely living as they live? Does God cause light to shine on his word in vain? Can men understandably treat any portion of God's word with indifferent, indifference or impunity without incurring guilt? Can men avoid performing known duties and yet be free from sin? Said Christ, If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. John 15, 22. When John the Baptist was, was preaching the first advent and preparing for a people to meet the Lord, he said unto the Jews, Think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Matthew 3, 9. And from this it appears that the Jews, they fell back on their good father Abraham to excuse themselves for not receiving the testimony of John. They overlooked the fact that Abraham rejoiced to see the day of Christ, that he would have gladly received John's testimony if he had lived in his day. They did not realize that they could not be Abraham's children indeed without possessing the spirit which he was imbued. Now, is, is not this the condition of those who refer to good Christians in, in past to justify themselves for not receiving the truths that apply to the present time. And if the Jews who lived at the close of the former dispensation could not be sanctified without receiving John's preaching, can the last church be sanctified without receiving those truths relating to Christ's second coming? It will require a special preparation to meet the Lord. When he comes, it will be necessary for the last church to look what well, for Christ. For it is to them that look for him that he will appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Hebrews 9.28 And it shall be said that in that day, lo, this is our God, and we have waited for him, and he will save us. Isaiah 25.9 Now, we cannot look for Christ without watching for the signs of the times and believing in the advent near. This is found in the book Sanctification or Living Holiness, pages 13 through 15. In my closing remarks is that there is, as we see from God's word, that, there, that history has been fulfilled and that we're in the, in the prefaces of of the time of trouble, of the close of probation, that we need to meet the Lord in holiness because without holiness, we will not be able to face His coming. So it is needful for us to work with God for the purification, for the sanctification of our whole selves, our whole spirit, our whole soul, our whole body is supposed to be preserved, blameless, unto the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for just, for your love and kindness and mercy to us, that you have shown to us where we are in the prophetic record. And Father, it points to us our present duty to meet our Lord. I pray that you will work in us as you have promised, both to will and to do of your good pleasure, purify us. I ask this, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.